Hey, welcome to Everything Farm. I want to talk about wobblers in the field or sprinklers for a strip. I, this is part two, because I did a part one and uh, some people brought up some benefits to drip and a little bit of a discussion, which is always good. And I want to talk about each one of those points and my experience with them. The first one is on la very large farms, 100 acres, 300 acres, 1,000 acres, you know, just single crop, I don't farm that way. I don't know anything about it. And every video I do is about small scale farming. So it's not something I'm talking about. So if I'm talking about, you know, a good cultivator, you know, what I feel is a really efficient cultivator, it's always for small scale farming, two acres or less, you know, mixed veg, you know, see, I, mixed veg, mixed veg, it's all different. Um, it's just a very different way to farm. I'm not farming with a tractor, none of that. So it's not even something I consider and it's, it's always implied in everything I do. The other comment is, you know, drip for under plastic. So if you're using plastic mulch. And again, it's sort of the same thing, but you know, I know small farms use plastic. Uh, even market farms use plastic. I don't, so I, I didn't even think of it. And absolutely, if you're covering your beds with uh, plastic or, you know, where you put the holes in it and then plant into the holes, you have no choice. But I feel like, you know, I don't want to use plastic, but now you're losing all the benefits of sprinklers. One other thing that was brought up was that you want to water plants slowly, which I, I didn't quite understand because you actually want to get the soil saturated as quickly as possible. The amount of time that the plant is drinking or absorbing water is not really relevant to that. Because once your soil is holding water, the plant can drink for days if it wants until, this, until that is exhausted. So they're both doing that. It's just the overhead sprinkler is going to saturate your bed quicker. So when it's 100 degrees out, and you just planted transplants, that's what you want. You want to be able to plant, get that soil saturated as soon as possible so your plants can start drinking, however long it takes. I'm not sure it really, really matters. Um, so, you know, just let you know that that's a thought out there and uh, uh, if you want to look into it further. The other thing is, when you're planting transplants, it's not just about getting them their first drink of water, it's about watering them in. So you want to water in and fill in those empty spaces, right? Whenever you transplant, you're creating empty air pockets that roots can't go through. So, you know, you're pressing it down or your paper pot transplanter is pressing it down, but still there's going to be a lot of air pockets in there. And that's what a sprinkler is going to do is it's going to water it in and protect those seedlings and reduce transplant shock. And so that's a benefit to it. So, I wouldn't personally think that drip is better for transplants. It's, it's always going to be a sprinkler. Something else that's brought up, but I think I've talked about it, which is there's some plants you don't want to get wet. Um, you know, tomatoes is a good example, or maybe cucumbers. But I only grow those indoors. And that, that's the difference between a very large farm and a small farm is you can make those decisions because you only need a certain small space to grow your tomatoes indoors. I would never grow tomatoes outside. But then also the question comes to my head is like, well, they're outside, they're getting rained on, unless you're in a place where there's no rain and that, you know, then maybe you want to use some drip for those plants. Um, but I would always say it's better to just keep them inside. They just love being inside. Uh, and that's what I do. And it's just, it's easier to trellis them inside. You can put them on one stem. You can keep them hard pruned. The production goes up. You can just take care of them better inside. I don't think about it as a benefit to drip because I can grow tomatoes outside because of it. It just, it never really makes sense to me. Um, but maybe there are certain situations. If you're doing a hundred acres of tomatoes, yeah, because you're not going to have enough big enough house. But usually when people are doing tomatoes at that level, they're doing them in a glass house. Um, so I don't do them outside. So everything outside, I feel like can be rained on and that's why it's out here. And therefore there's absolutely no reason for me to use uh, drip in that case. 
another thing that was brought up was erosion. While rain definitely erodes, and I can see it like, you know, where it's steep back there, and I try to uh, uh, make sure I plant really quickly in there or put cover crop in. I've never seen it happen from a wobbler, and it has never, I've never really thought about it because of how light it's sending it out in the small drops. It just never erode like uh, rain does. So it's something I've never thought about or experienced. Um, and I've been using wobblers for, I mean, 15, 16 years now, and I've never noticed it, except if, you know, maybe it's stuck in a position or something and it starts eroding the edge of a bed or something, but I've never actually noticed it. But it may be something you want to think about if you're on a hill and maybe you have to use drip for that reason. But, you know, I'd always want to consider all the other benefits that you're getting, like direct seeding. There's no way you can do it with drip. It's just, it's just too uneven and too slow for direct seeding or for the transplant situation or being at a water quickly and evenly. Um, there's just too many benefits. Now, the other thing is efficiency. You know, that somehow you're saving water by using drip. Now, and I think about it and I'm like, well, when I'm going out to farm and I'm transplanting or something, my goal is not to save water. My goal is to produce great vegetables in quantity and in quality that I can earn a profit off of. Now, I don't want to just water for no reason and just, you know, be wasting water and not fix leaks. You know, that's not what I'm saying, but it's a very different goal which means I think of it more like gallons per production rather than just how many gallons of water you're using. Because if I'm just watering with drip and I have to water all day to try to get the bed, you know, saturated, there's still water being evaporated. And if the, any seedlings die or I'm not getting my germination the way I want, I got to do it again, my production per gallon is just going down. And therefore, my efficiency is going down. So that means my profitability is going down. Now, that's another point. When I say I find it to be more profitable, it doesn't mean you can't be profitable with drip. Of course you can. You can be profitable with anything. But it's about how much, right? It's about one can be more profitable than the other. You know, maybe the most water saving could be bringing over a a jug of water and just, you know, making sure you water only that, that seedling. But of course you can see that that would be completely inefficient and would not be more profitable while you may save water. And another comment was, well, drip only waters the bed and not the path. And I think that might have to do maybe with efficiency that you're using less water because you're just watering the bed and you're not watering the pathways. And again, it's about, if it's about gallons per production and gallons per production, sprinklers in the field, I feel is gonna be better, but I wanna water my paths. I want the soil to be alive everywhere. And if I never water the paths during the summer and you have you know, incredibly dry soil, the life goes down. I know that my vegetables are rooting into the paths and that, that's what I want. I, I don't see a reason why I wouldn't want to water the paths unless you're talking about very, very large scale farming where you're doing a hundred acres, then that's going to cost you money. All of that extra water you're using to with sprinklers. I get it, but it's not the type of farming I do and I, I don't know much about it. So while there may be some benefits to drip, I believe that sprinklers have far more benefits and it's efficiency to profitability or to production ratio is just so much higher. I can put them in permanently. I can water immediately. I just turn it on. I don't worry about when I plant. I can plant in the middle of the day and I'm watering everything in I'm getting everything to germinate well because I've got, I'm going to be seeding radishes here. I'm going to have mature chart here, and then I'm going to be doing, uh, you know, uh, some carrots here. 
And I need something that's going to work for all of it. And drip just doesn't do that. But if you're doing tomatoes in the field, and just, uh, which you know maybe you are, I don't know, uh, and you they're not going to get wet from rain for some reason, then maybe it makes sense. But for me, I stick with the wobbler. And yes, you may have your own particular situation. That's great. But I just wanted to give you my perspective on it, what I'm doing on my farm to reach high production. And uh, it sprinklers all the way in the field.